Hello, I'm Johnny Engineer, and today's third lesson is going to be some poetry from my poem bank.htm, which you can find at johntermel.com. So, this is going to be a recap of yesterday's lesson, How Bankers Create Our Money, How Money Works, How Can a Substance Man Creates Be Kept in Short Supply, Why Is There Insufficient for Our Industry to Apply, Where Does Our Money Come From, Has An Answer Known by Few. The source and sink are hidden from an ordinary view. Our governments do not create the money that they use. All governments are deep in debt. We need some other clues. The media do tell us when the supply of money grows, but very, very few do ask ourselves and wonder, where's the hose? Supply of money must come down. We hear it constantly. But where's the drain? Is contemplated so infrequently. The banking of liquidity is understood by few, but there must be a tap and drain which money must go through. The engineers are plumbers called, the nickname they have earned. Mechanics of the flows of fluids are what we have learned. Comparison of models is the engineering test. Is exponential faulty <clears throat> and is linear the best? A bank of poker chips that works like coins when some do play a linear banking system for comparison today. Transaction made with colored chips to help in keeping score, backed up with our collateral, <clears throat> it's one to one, no chore. In poker games we see that chips are traded in and out. Redemption of collateral is what it's all about. Inflation means that what we get for money is somehow lost. They say it's unavoidable, we all must bear the cost. Yet value of the poker chips is constant over time. A mere receipt for assets where there's no accounting crime. Since hardwares are identical, both round and colored too, and one did lose its value while the other counted true, inflation therefore can't be hardware, which works flawlessly. Inflation therefore must be software programmed crookedly. The bank ads reinforce with Billy and its piggy bank the notion that the loans they make are from the savings tank. The operation's simple and most everybody knows. A dollar in, a dollar out is how the system goes. A piggy bank is simple and we've all tried out a few. A money reservoir to save which grows by one and two. Banks are not like piggy banks. It's known by very few. The banks are more like poker banks with chips that are brand new. The issuance of currency is hidden from the slate. A rule to have deposits first was made law by the state. A limit set on money's volume, artificially. It's not on wealth, but on our savings supplementary. A hundred dollars to reserves are saved by you or me. Now ninety brand new dollars may be loaned out stringently. The ninety dollars does return and is deposited, so loans of eighty-one new dollars may be submitted. Depositing new money liberates a fraction more, but less and less, until you find you hit a finite score. So now you know how banks create money. Well, back in 1993, after I had made a million dollars running my underground gambling casino, and it busted me, and I had to spend it before they could take it away, I founded a political party, the Abolitionist Party, the Anti-Slavery Party, and you say, whoa, there's no slavery around anymore. Well, they might have gotten rid of the metal chains, but they haven't gotten rid of the debt chains, and we're here to finish the job. So we're the abolitionists after the debt chains. But anyway, I ran for parliament, had 80 candidates, uh, one more than the Greens, my chance to run for prime minister. And at the time, they had a show on much music called Talk Me to Your Leader, and they had a Canadian musical icon interview all the people who were running as party leaders. And I got to be interviewed by Randy Bachman, where I explained how the Let's Interest Free Barter System would work. But I wrote a special poem for that night, and I did it on national TV with Randy, so I'm going to do it again here to explain the injustice of having private banks running our money plates and creating our money for us, especially now that we know how they've hidden it. They're not lending us depositor savings for which we should pay interest. They're lending us new money and they're charging us interest. They don't deserve it. So I call this poem Having the Plates. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash, filling up your wallet with some money in a flash? Creating money accurately means to have the plates. The stamping of some paper into notes best demonstrates, or stamping metal into coins. 
or blips computerized into your bank account deposits. Checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, volts of electricity, to have the plates is printing money absolutely free. Now, if you printed it to spend, the others would be whale. Well. They'd call it counterfeiting and they'd send you off to jail. But what if government would let you print it out to lend with only what you could collect in interest to spend? If you can print and lend a thousand, hundred, a thousand out at 10%, you'd make 100 interest on printing that you lent. But if you could print up and lend a million out, you'd get an extra $100,000 for your fee on debt. If government stops using its own plates and comes to you, a billion printed nets, a hundred million revenue, with everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history to have the plates as best. Though never spending, only lending. Riches do await to all who with the plates become loan sharks to the state. And though to join the few who thusly profit, you might dream, wake up to see we're all the victims of this greedy scheme. Though governments of old had treasury run money plates without the interest of middle minute rip off rates, most governments today to banking industry have lost control of money plates, so interest is now a cost. To service debt in 99, Canada's request. $320 billion taxed for interest. We're taxed almost $1,000 each per month to pay for interest to holders of our plates they gave away. So we abolitionists, we want to get the plates back from the banks and have Treasury create the money for only a printing charge and thanks. The interest we save, the 1000 a month, would be split up, I recommend, for each to get a thousand dollars monthly dividend as if you owned a share in the incorporated state an income guaranteed for life no question no debate so right now governments are lifting interest in taxes off all the people and without changing anything at all in the tax structure the government structure all I'd like to do is get the plates back from the private banks so that government doesn't go borrow from them and tax me to pay them interest. And that thousand dollars a month that's hitting them with the Brinks trucks every month, once we get the plates back, we intercept the Brinks truck with our interest in it and give it back to ourselves as a dividend. So do you understand where your thousand dollar dividend would come from? It's the G note they're now lifting off you to pay taxes to the guys they gave the license to manufacture money to. And if we had treasury did it, we wouldn't have to pay that interest. So would you agree control of money plates by private banks should end with all that interest diverted to your thousand dollar monthly dividend? Well, if you understand where your genome would be coming from, because it's now being ripped off, and you want to have it back, you have to find a way to get an account at the Bank of Canada or the U.S. Treasury, anything but having to deal with the middlemen loan shark banks. I'm John, the anti-poverty systems engineer, and that's another lesson on how the banks shouldn't be allowed to create the new money and loan shark it out. Lesson number four next, how interest really makes it aggravated in the game for all the borrowers. P.S. And though retired residents do often feel dismay, they shouldn't fear if we should take their interest away. All those who live on savings bonds to furnish what they spend could buy some stocks, create some jobs, and get a dividend. So, no more unearned income for just sitting on your money, but you can invest it and see if you can make money that way. But there's another good thing. The money does not inflate anymore. And over time, as technology gets better, it'll start buying you more and more and more. So don't try and get more money for your food. Try and get more food for your money. God's dividend, not Satan's usury.